PNB Rock, best known for forging his own groundbreaking sound in R&B, was fatally shot at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles restaurant in Los Angeles on Monday, September 12th. This former Philly native was the mastermind behind the 2016 smash hit Selfish, and had just begun to reap the benefits that comes along with becoming one of the absolute best artists in his field. Now, whenever someone's life is taken in such a violent and unexpected fashion, it's always a hard thing to accept. But in Rock's case, it's even more so considering the dangerous life that he had managed to escape. Not only did Rock lose close family members to violence throughout his early years, but he himself was intricately involved in the streets during his time spent in Philly, and was sentenced to over two years in prison as a consequence. And yet, despite all of that, PNB Rock still managed to break out of that vicious cycle to accomplish his wildest dreams by becoming a musical icon which only makes what ultimately happened to him all the more tragic. So today, we're gonna take a look back at his life and career in honor of a man that was taken from this planet far too soon in our newest edition of Gone But Not Forgotten. PNB Rock was born Rakim Hashim Allen on December 9, 1991, in the Germantown neighborhood of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Growing up in a family of four brothers, Allen's father was murdered when he was a little more than a toddler, and from that point forward, his family relied primarily on his mother. By the time he was entering his teenage years, Rock and his family moved to Northeast Philly, where he first began to listen to artists like Tupac Shakur, as well as the R&B group Jodeci. But at the age of 13, Allen was sent to a youth detention program after falling in with a bad crowd on the Philly streets, where he was committing robberies as well as getting into multiple physical altercations in the schoolyard. Rock would later point to the murder of his oldest brother as a changing point in his life, something that put him on edge and alerted him to how suddenly a situation could turn deadly. He explained to DJ Academics on the Off The Record podcast, it's just been something in me that just let me know this shit is real life. I done seen people die. I done been around people that died. Anybody can die. At the age of just 19, Rock was arrested and sentenced to 33 months in prison for drug possession and violating his probation. While serving his time, he came across Drake's decade-defining album, Take Care, and became inspired to turn his life around with the help of music. Rock would then use the downtime during his prison sentence to write a series of songs that would eventually come to form the backbone of his first mixtape, R&B. But when he finally got out, he went through a period of homelessness as he tried to get his music career off the ground. It wasn't until Rock incurred yet another loss, this time his uncle Mo, that he began to pursue music with a relentless drive using the pain of his fallen family members to ignite his work ethic and finally break through. Having grown up a Philly boy, Rock decided to honor his hometown by naming himself after the street corner that he grew up on, Pistorius and Baton. Thus, his hip-hop moniker, PNB Rock. After independently releasing his R&B mixtape on his own in 2014, the sequel to that project, R&B 2, would capture the attention of Atlantic Music. The Warner-affiliated label would then sign Rock and release the third entry in his R&B mixtape series in 2015, alongside his immensely popular single, Jealous, featuring Fetty Wap. From the get-go, PNB Rock's ability to blend melodies with his innate rapping ability turned him into the next natural evolution in hip-hop. He discussed his unique blend of sounds with Paper Magazine in 2017 by telling them, It's like, what do you label yourself when you still infuse rap into your shit? People can't say I'm a rapper, but I don't feel like I'm a singer either. I'm not hitting super high notes and going crazy. I can't give you Chris Brown singing. I just got good melodies. Rock would then gain further prominence with the release of Fleek, which turned into a viral sensation over on Musical.ly with women across the US. But one of his biggest moments came alongside Atlanta rapper YFN Lucci when the two joined forces in 2016 for their hit anthem, Every Day We Lit. That song would peak at the number 33 spot on the Billboard Hot 100 and become the highest charting song for either artist. During that very same year, Rock would also release his highest performing solo track, Selfish, which was included on his Going Through the Motions mixtape that dropped in 2017. And this single would eventually go on to be certified triple platinum, while peaking at the number 51 spot on the Billboard Hot 100. Over the next few years, Rock would continue to hit the studio to record further projects, and in 2017, he'd finally release his first proper studio album, titled Catch These Vibes. Two years later, he'd drop his second, 2019's Trap Star Turned Pop Star. That latter album would become his best-selling record to date, climbing all the way to the four spot on the Billboard 200, making it clear as day that PNB Rock's career was headed to the very top. Making it clear as day that PNB's career was headed to the very top. Over the next handful of years, he would drop more hit singles, like Ordinary with Pop Smoke, Rose Gold with King Von, and his most recent, Love Me Again. But only two days after Love Me Again officially saw release, PNB Rock and his girlfriend Stephanie 
would walk into a Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in Los Angeles, a restaurant that Rock would unfortunately never leave alive. Rock and his partner were enjoying a meal together at this LA staple when an individual approached the couple and attempted to rob them, demanding that they hand over any and all personal items. It's believed that the suspect specifically targeted Rock because no one else in the restaurant was even attacked or assaulted despite the fact that there were plenty of others around in the middle of the lunch rush. After demanding that Rock hand over his jewelry, a verbal exchange of some sort took place between the two and Rock was quickly shot several times before falling to the floor. The attacker then removed several items from Rock's body and fled away to a getaway car. Like the coward he is, jeez. While the video of the event showed Rock still moving after the attack, Soon enough, he did take a turn for the worst. The security guard featured in some of the footage rushing to the wounded rapper's side would later talk with Rolling Stone, telling them, I did what anybody I hope would do for me. I was telling him, be calm. Be calm, get control of your breathing. Don't trip on what you thought you seen. Get control of your breathing. And then his breathing declined. It went all the way down. I think he was gone. He was just gone. I was probably the last person he saw. According to that same security guard, Rock's girlfriend handed him her phone to dial 911 because she was too distraught to do so herself. In fact, he says that he had to ask other people to hold her back because she was screaming in hysterics. Rock would officially be pronounced dead about 45 minutes after his body was transferred to a local hospital. And while there were surveillance cameras inside the restaurant that may help apprehend the shooter, at the time of this writing, nobody has been arrested for this crime. Over on social media, the tributes to PMB Rock began pouring in almost as soon as the news broke. Drake would post an image of the two of them on Instagram stories, while Offset took to Twitter to ask people to pray for PMB's two young daughters. Others pointed to the uptick in crime in Los Angeles over recent years, which eventually led to discussions about the safety of rappers, especially after it was revealed that Rock's girlfriend had revealed the pair's location with an image posted to Instagram. That wasn't particularly an angle of conversation that Cardi B cared for all that much, and she quickly challenged those people who were blaming Rock's partner by tweeting that it was highly unlikely that the suspects had tracked them online, while also suggesting that anybody saying so was irresponsible and inconsiderate, especially considering the tragic outcome. Meanwhile, shortly following the attack, DJ Academics would remind us that only a few days earlier, he had interviewed PMB Rock, during the course of which, Rock would reveal how he and his girlfriend had previously been out on Fairfax Avenue in Los Angeles. This was during the pandemic when people tried to rob him. He told academics, where I'm from, we like sneaky criminals. In LA, they bold. PMB Rock got himself out of that situation, but this time he obviously wasn't so lucky. It's a tragic and heartbreaking conclusion to a man's life who, as an artist, was just beginning to scratch the surface of his true potential. Now, we'll never know how far he could have gone after his life was taken in such a senseless fashion. PMB Rock is survived by his girlfriend Steph and his two young daughters, Zuri and Milan. We here at Before They Are Famous want to send our prayers and well wishes to them during this unbelievably trying time. Rest in power, PMB Rock, and thank you for leaving us with some fantastic music to always remember you by.